Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be restoring this destroyed MacBook Pro. On the outside, the MacBook's display is completely obliterated with major damage to the center of the screen and separation occurring between the display layers. On the back, there are many marks and scratches with a cracked and indented Apple logo. However, this is only the beginning. On the inside, the laptop is missing half of its battery, which has been cut out. Along with that, it's also missing its two speakers, a board interconnect cable, an SSD, and it has a damaged speaker connector on the logic board. I can't think how a laptop could become so damaged. Got any idea? Leave a comment below. Regardless, this is definitely going to be a challenge. I received this laptop as part of a 26 kilo Mac lot I purchased from John from Roadkill Incorporated. John is a Mac refurbisher and reseller who, like me, supports the right to repair movement. I'll leave his YouTube and website down in the description below. In that 26 kilo Mac lot video, I tested this very laptop and found that it still turns on even with all that damage. Using an external display and a USB hard drive, I was able to boot it up. But of course, that's not what we're wanting, so let's get into fixing this sad laptop. But before we get started, I'd like to thank my mates over at iFixit for sending across some parts that I'll be needing to restore this laptop, including a new battery, SSD, speakers, and an interconnect cable. So if you're looking for any of these parts or an awesome toolkit, check out the link down in the description. I'll also be needing a new display and a few other small parts that I'll be salvaging from another unfixable MacBook Pro. Getting started, I will remove the 10 pentalobe screws from the bottom of the MacBook. The Retina MacBook was one of the first Apple laptops to have these security screws. Inside, we can see the damage that I mentioned earlier, and the first thing I'm going to do is try and replace the damaged speaker connector. To remove the damaged connector, I'll use a soldering iron and a very tiny pair of tweezers to help me lift it up and away from the logic board. With that removed, we're going to need a replacement. So I'm going to be using this donor MacBook Pro, which I got in the same 26 kilo Mac lot as the laptop we're working on today. This one has catastrophic damage and is beyond any sort of repair. So this logic board is perfect for harvesting working components off. I'll be taking its speaker connector off and transferring it over to our working logic board. To do this, I use some hot air and heated from the bottom to avoid melting the connector. With it removed, I will clean up the solder pads on our working logic board to prep it for the installation of our new speaker connector. For reinstallation, I'll be using a soldering iron as hot air will likely melt the connector. To assist with installation, a microscope would be recommended for this, but as I don't have one, I just did it by eye. Once all the pins had been soldered on, I can move across to our battery and remove what's left of it. For this, I'll be using isopropyl alcohol as Apple no longer screws in the batteries for their MacBook Pro models. Apple went from hot swappable batteries to using security screws to now just gluing it into place. Not only is this harder for third party repair, but even Apple themselves. The isopropyl alcohol will help soften the adhesive underneath and then I can use a hard plastic card to try and break through the adhesive, releasing the battery cells. With our battery cells removed, I now need to clean up the residual adhesive. Using some special adhesive remover will help it break down and become easier to scrape away. It's disappointing to see the battery was glued in. Similar aged MacBook Airs use screws instead, which is a much better method to what we see here. And this makes the battery replacements so much easier. You can see just how long and how much scraping is required to properly remove all of the old adhesive. After cleaning everything up, it's time to remove the last component of the battery, which is its charging circuit, which is still connected to the MacBook Pro's logic board. Underneath is a little spacer which we'll also need to remove to ensure it doesn't get lost. It's time to get our new display installed, so I'll start by disconnecting the display cable, several screws and one bracket. 
Moving across to the other side, I'll need to unplug the webcam cable, Wi-Fi antenna cables, as well as a few screws and another bracket. With those out, the display simply lifts out of place. A replacement display is a used part which costs an absurd 450 Australian dollars. More disappointing than that is it came with loose hinges, so I'm going to have to open it up and fix that first. This display was the cheapest I could find. Other sellers were selling them for over $700, which is more than it costs to buy the entire computer used. Displays for the newer USB-C MacBooks are significantly cheaper. I believe this is because the older MacBooks are in high demand, given them having more ports and a small amount of upgradability. As for this display panel, I'll need to remove the screws, apply some new thread locker and tighten everything back down. Honestly, for the price I pay for this display, I believe the seller should have done that, although he obviously didn't. I'll reinstall the clutch cover, slide everything back on, and we should have a working display. Lining our display up with the body of the MacBook, I can simply put one screw in each side before closing the lid, which will allow me to correctly line the display up with the frame to ensure it's not leaning to one side. Then I can apply some thread locker and fasten all of the screws and brackets securing everything into place. Applying the little foam pieces on top of the screws, I can begin connecting all of the cables back into place. After connecting the display cable, I'll reconnect the webcam and the three antenna wires going to the Wi-Fi card. I can then crack out the iFixit replacement interconnect cable to connect the daughter board to the main logic board of the MacBook Pro. I'll also take the time to remove the screws that are still remaining from where the speakers once were. You can see given how bent they were, how much force someone put on these poor speakers trying to rip them out of place, not realizing there was another screw in there. Removing the SSD caddy, you can see Apple's proprietary SSD connector, but this one also seems to have some slight damage to the cable, and as I had another one laying around, I'm just gonna swap it out with that. For our SSD, I'll be using this one from OWC, which is custom made to fit Apple's proprietary connector for the SSD. I have gotten away with using an adapter with newer MacBooks to connect regular SSDs, so you might wanna go that route as well. It's time to crack out our new replacement battery and get that installed into this MacBook Pro. The top portion is actually screwed into place, but the bottom is only glued. For our screws, I had to salvage some and I found some in my parts bin, which are actually from iPhone 4S's. They're all the same size and worked perfectly for this use. With the top portion of the battery in, all that remains to do is to get the lower half seated into position. Adhering it down into place, I can then attach the speakers. I will reuse the bent screw for the speaker as I couldn't find any replacements, so I had to work with what I had. I did find screws to fit in the lower section, but couldn't find any for the upper part of each speaker, so they'll be missing one screw each. After they're fastened into position, I can route and connect each cable. With our major repairs completed, it's time to give the laptop a bit of maintenance by replacing the seven-year-old thermal paste and give the fans a bit of a clean. In return, the laptop may run a bit cooler. After removing the heatsink, we can get a look at what I would call a lot of thermal paste. Cleaning that off with some isopropyl alcohol, I'll move across to the fans and get those cleaned up before we get the heatsink reinstalled. I will open up each fan and give it a bit of a brush out to remove most of the dirt that's built up inside. After I'm happy with each fan, I can reassemble it and install it back into our MacBook Pro. I'll also need to clean up the heatsink before we reinstall it. Using a cotton swab and some alcohol, I can clean up the copper pad before brushing down the fins with a brush. After which, I can apply a nice drop of thermal paste and reinstall the heatsink back into the laptop. Proceeding, I'll clean the inside of the laptop with some alcohol to remove any fingerprints and dust and just brush off the motherboard as well. 
I can now reconnect our battery by screwing it down into position with its several screws. I'll reinstall some of the rubber gaskets that go around the heatsink pipe, as well as the little rubber feet that go on the screws over the processor. You may have noticed this laptop is missing two little pieces of plastic which grip onto the back casing. I'll salvage them from my donor MacBook for use with this one. With those both installed, I can quickly clean down the back housing of this MacBook before we reinstall it. Positioning it into place, I can fasten the 10 Pentalobe 5 screws to seal up the MacBook. But you can see it's still looking pretty gross on the outside. So now we can use some adhesive remover and some isopropyl alcohol to give this computer a complete clean to remove any of the dirt and grime buildup on the old parts as well as our new display. I can remove the sticker from the inside of the laptop and give the palm rest and keyboard a good clean before finally wiping down the display. And we're done. So this is it. A once badly destroyed MacBook is now in a working condition. This particular laptop is an early 2013 model with a 2.6 GHz Intel Core i5 and 8 gigs of RAM. It can run 10.8 to the latest version of Mac OS X. After having soldered on a new speaker connector, we can take a listen and see that both sides are working as they should. This MacBook is far from perfect. It contains a few minor marks and scratches around the housing. Either way though, we are left with a fully functional MacBook Pro. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the computer playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any tips or what tools I use to repair devices, be sure to check out my website, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.